So here we have an EKG, a 12 lead ECG, of an 84-year-old male with end-stage renal disease. So take a moment, you can pause the video, look at it, and when you're ready, uh, restart the video and we'll go through this together. So as you see here, this patient with end-stage renal disease, so bad kidney disease right now, is coming in with this EKG. And what we see here, and the main features I want to get across are hyperkalemia. So we're going to focus on hyperkalemia and the findings we see in this. Now one thing to note is that what we see is the severity of the hyperkalemia is actually correlated with the EKG changes and the risk for arrhythmia uh, in the setting of hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia means that we have an elevated potassium, serum potassium, so high serum potassium. And what we have here uh, the main finding that we're noting are these very peaked T waves, okay? So these ones here, okay, we often commonly see them. The first sign of hyperkalemia, even mild hyperkalemia, are the pointed T waves. These are the earliest sign. They're tall and narrow, as we see here, and they're most prominent in the precordial lead. So precordial leads being V1 through V6. Okay, so that's often the first sign we'll see. So when you look here, tall peaked T waves that are narrow, that's one of them, okay? And we said, as things progress, we get different changes, meaning as the potassium levels get greater, we see different changes. And some of those changes that we could see, so from the pointed T waves, so this will be the first change, okay? We'll say in mild cases, in moderate cases, okay, this is where we start to see an increase in the P wave duration, okay, meaning the P wave amp or duration, the width of it gets wider. We'll see an decrease in the P wave amplitude, okay, and we'll also see an increase in the PR interval, okay. So this, in this case, you may see so increase in PR interval, and what does that mean? We may see signs of AV block okay uh, going on here you may also see st elevation in leads v1 through v3 those precordial leads so you may see a rise in these leads of the st segment now we don't see that here the main thing that we're going for is hyperkalemia now in severe hyperkalemia you may also see so severe cases an increase in the qrs duration so the width widens then you can get a sine wave okay and then from the sine wave you can then get ventricular fibrillation so v-fib okay so let's look at this ekg now the rate that we know here uh, that they give us is 52 beats per minute we can easily find that remember that from beginning to end of our ekg represents 10 seconds so 10 seconds times 6 is 60 seconds okay and then from there what we can do is count the complexes going across so one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so then we would do nine times six it gives us a rate of about 54 beats per minute so close to the one they give us it's always good to correct or and check make sure now the pr interval here is 120 we're dealing with an adult patient 120 is normal remember normal pr intervals from 120 to 200 milliseconds in our adult patients we said that as the potassium level gets greater we may see an increase in that pr interval so we're not there yet still within normal limits okay so this is likely an early sign of this the mild hyperkalemia but something you want to act on in these patients before it gets worse and almost uh, to a fatal arrhythmia now the qrs duration here we said is 104 this is within normal limits okay remember in severe cases it can increase uh, the qrs duration so we don't see that here now the qt and qtc interval uh, qtc is the one we focus on here clinically and this one is within normal limits less than around 460 450 okay difference in it gets a little different between males and females now in this case uh, some would say this is mildly elevated in a male okay but in women if this is a female it may be normal but in terms of uh, clinically we probably wouldn't change management at this point here now one thing to note here is this p r and t what this signifies is this is the p wave axis this is the r or ventricular axis 
and this is the T wave axis. Now this here, when you see that 18, is positive 18 degrees, which is within normal limits. So this is a normal ventricular axis, okay? Remember, normal ventricular axis is between negative 30 degrees, okay, and about positive 110 degrees. So all this is normal, and when we say it's plus 18, so this here, that means it's about right there okay so positive 18 so that's within normal limits and we can clearly see that lead one is positive and lead avf is also mostly positive putting us there okay but you can see lead one is more positive and same with lead two remember lead one's here lead two's here lead avf is here we have mostly of a positive axis here okay normal so the main findings that you want to take away from here are first of all the hyperkalemia, okay? And we've put some findings that you could see with it. We went through the different stages, mild, moderate, and severe, okay? Remember in some you say QRS widening and maybe even the presence of a bundle branch block or intraventricular conduction delay, bradycardia, okay, or sinus arrest. In this case, we actually see a rhythm that's 52, okay, we got 54. So below that 60 beats per minute, okay, of the atrial rate, when we talk about atrial rate, we can also, in this case, use the ventricular rate. But when we talk about sinus uh, bradycardia, we're talking about the atrial rate being less than 60, meaning the P waves. But in this case, we notice that there's a P wave coming before every QRS complex. Okay, these are all our P waves. So if you were to count them up, you'd also get the same number of nine here, and the atrial rate would be the same. So again, less than 60, we have a P wave axis between zero and positive 75, which we see here, okay? Upright P waves in one and two, okay? You also see them inverted in lead AVR and upright in these lateral leads here, okay? That's something you can see, and then sometimes it'll be also upright in a, uh, AVF as we see here, okay? So sinus rhythm is present here. They All those P waves have same morphology is another thing that you want to make sure of, okay? So we have sinus bradycardia because we have a sinus rhythm with a slow rate, less than 60 beats per minute. And we also have a patient presenting with end-stage renal disease. So that should be a clue that uh, hyperkalemia is something you should look out for in these patients, okay? Now, other causes of hyperkalemia, aside from end-stage renal disease or renal failure or acidosis, hemolysis, muscle damage, insulin deficiency, Addison's disease, and medications such as uh, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or potassium sparing diuretics can also increase the potassium level. So things to look out for in your patients, okay? Now the main finding, again, that we're going for is this here, okay? Sinus bradycardia, but I want you to be able to notify and notice those pointed, those peak T waves that we saw in the precordial leads in defiant, and they demonstrate hyperkalemia, okay? So important finding to know about because it can change patient management, all right? Now, I want to bring uh, your attention to our EKG coding reference. I know many of you have already have access, uh, so I want to, those that don't know about it, what you can see here are our coding reference on this side, okay? And what we have are about 10 different parts, and this has taken a long time to put together, but I think you'll find it useful. And this is what we just saw. Okay, the sign is bradycardia that I mentioned. You can have access to it on the go. And I also included an example of some leads that you can look at, all right, uh, if you forget it. And then also clinical disorders, that's where I put the hyperkalemia. So you can look there for that if you need to refer, okay, with examples as well. Now, how you would get access is you would go to this link here, okay, that's present. You put that link in, you enter your email, so you'll come to this page, and then you'll put your email here, okay? And then you'll also enter my password because this will give you the free access, okay? So the EKG guy, AK, no spaces, no capital letters, just put that there, and that will be your password. Okay, from there you'll click submit, you'll get an email, make sure just to confirm your email, and then you'll have access at that point, okay? And you can use this on the go, on your phone, or on a computer uh, if you're reviewing EKGs, and there's a lot of information that we have there uh, as we start to put this together for the fellows here. So that's uh, the reference uh, that you can have access to. So again, go to that email, or that uh, link here, 
put in your email and then from there enter that password that I've listed here the EKG guy at AK okay so put that in here and you should have uh, access there now uh, people have asked about lectures and stuff remember if you go to our site which is uh, www.ekg.md you'll come to this page and if you go to lectures you can find that there okay there's where we have a number of free lectures over uh, three or four hundred lectures so you can certainly find there uh, if you want access that of our course this is where you would go here okay so this is our EKG course that we use to teach our students so this is the EKG course that includes the book that it comes with and videos now one thing to note is that the lectures you see on YouTube and those in the course are not the same okay in the course if you go there you'll see that every page in the book has a corresponding video so there's over 25 hours of video there's a number of practice things that are not available here on the lectures okay but either way um, they're they're both helpful but I, I think this would be the ideal choice but uh, if you don't want that and you just want to use the online lectures I think that works as well okay um, so please let me know if you have any information or any other question um, regarding any of this I'm more than happy to answer I want to thank you all for your support we really appreciate it we are the largest fastest growing EKG community in the world